It is well known that transportation tasks are a fundamental part of the work in any heavy industrial sector. They have been the foundation not only for the movement of supplies by road, but also for the complex tasks of transporting important loads, from moving raw materials in construction projects to transporting essential resources in the forestry industry. It is in the latter where efforts to find the ideal transport machinery have continued to intensify over the years. Their complexity requires highly powerful and robust trucks that can handle substantial cargo while also providing safety and maneuverability due to the limited space available in forests. In Canada, multiple companies have focused on finding this ideal balance, leading to the proliferation of highly successful and recognized brands such as Pacific Trucks, as well as some highly peculiar vehicles. During the 1960s, the dream of having a logging road capable of moving multiple tons of wood in a single trip was slowly taking shape. While the options at that time were mostly limited to heavy-duty transport units used in challenging environments like forests, Butler Brothers Logging, a company based in British Columbia, Canada, ventured into the search for a truly specialized solution. This journey began when Claude Butler was trying to develop something radically different from the logging trucks of the time. With the help of a good friend named Basil Oldfield, they developed and built the first of four models produced, with the goal of creating a unit capable of carrying 100 tons in a single load. Its design was the essential basis for subsequent units, featuring a robust frame with four drive axles, resulting in an articulated 8x8 configuration. This model had a compact cabin with the engine literally incorporated on the side, and objectively speaking, this unit was relatively small compared to the units developed later, so the goal of carrying 100 tons was far from being achieved. There is not much information available about this unit. It is believed to have been launched between 1960 and 1961, and remained in testing and service until the release of the next produced model. Known simply as Butler 36, the second unit was produced by Claude and his brother Wally. Continuing the aspiration to reach a payload of 100 tons, this model retained the articulated design but greatly increased its dimensions. Built between 1963 and 1964, this truck was manufactured in an old hangar at the Victoria Airport, featuring a rigid frame with tires literally larger than those of the previous model. Additionally, it was equipped with a V12 engine, similar to the first version, placed in the same way. For this version, the cabin was positioned slightly lower, although it still couldn't carry any load on top of it. The surface area of its cargo area was significantly increased, with a width believed to be around 4.8 meters. This prompted its makers to keep their colossal creation always hidden in the forest, unable to even imagine it traveling on the road. This version has a peculiar story. Basil Oldfield, who had previously assisted in designing the first unit, brought his car known as the Spirit of Tomorrow to the hangar where truck Butler 36 was manufactured so that they could pose together in a photo that would immortalize their legacy. Historically, there are records of a third model produced named Butler 70 following the simplicity trend of the previous prototype. Its construction also took place in the airport hangar, using the same axles and tires as the previous model. However, it had markedly different features, mainly in appearance such as the cabin protections, side stakes, and frame-mounted tanks. Nevertheless, this version was slightly larger than Butler 36, as it was intended to carry 100 tons of wood in the unit itself, while being able to pull another 100 tons on an equally robust trailer. To achieve this, a much larger engine was installed in this unit, a V16, although it is not clear whether it already had a turbocharger. However, 
Despite this model already having truly attractive qualities, the project continued to advance. Tragically for Model Butler 70, and fortunately for the subsequent and final version, this prototype was literally used as the basis for what would be the pinnacle of timber trucks. The Butler Mark V, as it is known, can be described with a single word that, without a doubt, would be spectacular. Born from the experience gained through the production of several of their own models, this vehicle was conceived to face the most challenging situations among the hills, curves, and rivers of the Sook forests in Canada. Built with many components from Truck Butler 70, this unit managed to achieve the long-awaited goal of transporting large loads, allowing the movement of between 150 and 200 tons of wood at once with a trailer attached. This led the manufacturers not only to focus this unit for their own forestry service, but also to see enormous potential in using it as a heavy-duty transport truck for various industries such as construction and mining. To accomplish this, the unit was equipped with a powerful Detroit V16 engine, capable of moving the nearly 25 meters in length that the unit reached with an attached trailer. Interestingly, being so large and heavy, the company had to transport it fully assembled by ship and rail because it could not legally travel on public roads. There are records of Chile having intentions to purchase some of these units for operations with a dump truck. However, this was right when the country was experiencing a severe political problem that resulted in the abrupt end of the trade agreement. Likewise, Claude Butler expressed that there was interest from other buyers in countries like Australia and even in the Middle East for oil field operations. But tragically, this never materialized. Unfortunately for this story, by the time the Mark V was launched, which was around 1974, there were already some trucks on the market that offered very similar performance and capabilities, but had much greater adaptability. In fact, this Canadian truck came to be seen as an orphan within the logging fleets because it couldn't adapt to the style and pace of work of other trucks of the time, which ultimately ended the potential and life of Butler logging trucks. While information is scarce and to some extent unreliable, what is known is that Claude Butler's decision to offer his truck as a multi-application platform ended with the sale of the existing units. Unfortunately, the Mark V has survived to this day, but in a simply deplorable state. The last photographic resources show how this monster sleeps in the Canadian forest, waiting for someone to take the initiative to restore it. Before you go, we'd like to recommend our channel, Gear Unlimited. You'll find excellent content on various topics that we're sure you'll enjoy. Thank you for joining our community. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, like, and turn on the notification bell. Until next time.